So we're supposed to start the podcast. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, it is a great day for great grievances here at I've Had It with our illustrious podcasting star, America's greatest legal mind, Angie Pumps, Mima Sullivan, sharing her last days on earth here with us <laughs> at her advanced stage. And I will point out to the listener that dreams do come true because even a senior podcaster such as Pumps was able to go interview, make the trip from middle America to the East Coast, to our nation's capital, to interview none other than the Vice President Kamala Harris. How did it feel, Pumps? I'll tell you what, I was so impressed, and I've absolutely made peace with the fact that meeting and speaking with the Vice President about such important, such important issues at such an important time is the peak of my life. And so I know now, here I am, and now I'm just going straight downhill, but I'm, I'm at peace with it. Here's the thing that I thought about as well. We've had this podcast for about 18 months, right? Mm -hmm. And so kind of by accident, it kind of blew up, right? Right. We certainly didn't, aren't smart enough to game the system <laughs> There's no for doubt. it to have reached the uh, peak that it did. But as I mentioned peak, I'm certain that the downfall after such an amazing opportunity and interview that we experienced will be quick and abrupt. Absolutely. And it's we'll, going to be face plant city. Yeah. We'll crawl back into our holes. I'll drop you back off at the uh, assisted living center and we'll just go on about our lives. Right. I mean, we'll just go on and act like we were big once. That's right. All right. Listen up, listeners. I'm here. Welcome to I've Had It. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. Kylie's with us today. And for those of you that don't know, we have a... Uh, Patreon page where all the fun goes down. And um, we started a little cult there. There's <laughs> la layers of the cult. And today's episode, I want to highlight some of the members of our Patreon, our cult members, and talk about their grievances and what they have had it with. And this is top notch, top tier content. Oh, I'm excited. So without further ado, I want to read the first grievance from J.D. Aloha. And she says, I've had it with people that come back from vacation and talk about how refreshed and revitalized they are. <laughs> the only thing vacation makes me feel is the desire for more vacation. <laughs> Shut your pie holes about how rejuvenated you are. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Lucy chimes in. I also don't want to look at your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, Lucy. The, okay, J.D. Aloha. I think that this is so under-discussed because yeah. after I go on a vacation, it is so traumatizing to come back and re-enter society and re-enter jobs, responsibilities, uh, duties, cleaning, paying bills, being around other people that you're forced to be around. Um, I feel like I don't know that it benefited me to have that glimpse of what it's like to not be a responsible person. No, I totally agree. I have long said when you get back from vacation, life punishes you, punishes you for being gone. You're behind on everything. I remember when the kids were really little and we'd go on a girl's trip, it would take me like two days to come back. And I'd be like, how do I do this? How do I live in this life? So I almost think vacation, people that say, oh, I'm so refreshed. Da, 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 I feel more beat down when I come back from vacation. Here's what I propose. I propose that we need to make time for a vacation. So let's say it's seven days. Mm -hmm. You go to a beach, you go skiing, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you do for your vacation. Then you have a post-vacation staycation. That would benefit me. That's a great idea. So you go on a vacation and, you know, I always like to kind of go abroad and I'm always, you know, schlepping around. I've got to go see this. I've got to go do this. I, my vacations are not relaxing by design because I want to go see and absorb the surroundings around me. But then when I get home, 
I would like nothing more than a staycation to fluff up in my bed Mm -hmm. and watch episode after episode of some mindless TV show or documentary as kind of a re-entry program. Kind of like a soft landing, like a soft transition back into the daily grind. I think that's a great idea. Under discussed is let's talk about you get home Mm -hmm. on a Sunday night. That's the worst. You've gone through a bunch of fuckery at the airports where your flights are totally delayed and you roll in at midnight. Okay. You get home, you unpack, you get to bed, you have to wake up super early, and then you roll into the office the next morning. This is prime example that no good deed yep. goes unpunished because the punishment that is that Monday morning is criminal. So I think we have to do a vacation, soft landing, staycation, then re-enter into the workforce. What do you think, Kylie? I agree. Vacations ultimately just give me more anxiety. Yeah, no, I agree. One thing I want to point out, because Jennifer made a very great point about when you get home from the airport, Mm -hmm. trying to get your life back in order, you've got to unpack, do laundry. I just would like to bring it to the listener's attention that Mm -hmm. our gal Kylie, Mm -hmm. she doesn't unpack. She just repacks the next time she leaves. And I would like to point out for the listener that nothing sits up and pumps his craw more than this issue. Oh, I'm I'm an immediate unpacker, do the laundry. Like I won't go to bed until the laundry is folded and put away from what was in the suitcase when I arrived home. If I have to stay up till four o'clock in the morning to do it, then I will. And it just, it makes me so nervous every time we go on a trip, Kylie, because I think she's just taking that old dirty stuff out of that bag and she's just putting new stuff in it. And then I think about that bag for three or four days after we get back, like Kylie's clothes are still sitting in her laundry or in her suitcase. You just think about that at home? I, yes, I do. I know it's fucked up. I know that says a lot more about me than about you, but I think about her unpacked bag. I rarely think about it. I do. Uh, but I do get um, a little satisfaction that Kylie could literally give zero shits about this issue and you care so much which reminds me all the time one of the biggest things you say to everybody one of your biggest comebacks your playground antic to end all playground antics is you look at people deadpan and go why do you care well i know i know all right let's move along all right i've got one from Stephen vaughn okay he writes he's had it with strangers trying to make conversation at the gym i'm a bigger guy have been since i was born Literally came out at 12 pounds. Anyway, for the last year or so, I've been on a bit of a hashtag fitness journey. And I can't tell you how many people will stop me while I'm working out. And it's like, I know they probably mean well, but goddamn, I'm not here to be your inspirational fat person. (laughs) I had one guy go on this long tangent about how he didn't know what it was like to be out of shape and about a fat guy he knew that lost weight and eventually ran a marathon. Please leave me alone and let me sweat my ass off in peace. Okay. Gym culture Mm. is just bananas. Okay. First and foremost, Stephen Vaughn, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. This is your deal. You're going to the gym. You're working out. It's nobody's business what your weight was before, during, or after. That's your situation. It's a shame that we all have to go to these public gyms and watch everybody. The last time I was at a gym, I was mystified by the documenting of the exercise. Oh. So it's like when I were you and I used to be workout buddies. Yeah. And it was we went to the gym together because we made each other accountable because we both had to show up at the same time otherwise right. the whole thing fell apart. Right. Well, now it's shifted. You have these gym buddies that go, one person does a rep, you know, some reps, a cycle of exercises, while the other one films it. And then they reverse. And it's like this whole workout filming debacle so that they can post it up on social media. And again, I'm just going to say this. I want to make a point. Exercise is not that industrious for our species. We have been doing this shit literally for millions of years. 
we shouldn't be celebrating it. It's just something that our bodies should be doing. We don't need to document every burpee that's done and put it up on social media. I mean, I've completely had it with this. Furthermore, I've had it with all of the hashtags that go along with it. Here's some examples. Hashtag no days off. <laughs> Hashtag abs start in the kitchen. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> It's you wouldn't believe the fuckery with these hashtags. And then I think, am I on asshole island over here? The answer to that is probably yes. Right. Because then it's like all these comments. Oh, my God. Great form. Way to go. And it's just and I'm like, do do you need that to go exercise? Like I go exercise because I want to feel my heart rate. Get up. Makes me feel good. Like maybe the way people feel if they drink a glass of wine or something. I feel good about that. If I don't work out, I feel anxiety. I don't really need any support. I don't need any piling on about it. And I sure as fuck don't need to document it on Instagram. Here's my thing with the whole documenting yourself working out. Are you more interested in the workout or the documenting? What I also find, I mean, the people like taking turns filming each other. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's obnoxious. I mean, that's just fucking obnoxious. But what's even grosser, in my opinion, is when you have somebody that you can tell set up the camera and is video videoing themselves working out, which nobody gives a flying frog's fat ass that you're working out. Nobody cares how much weight you're lifting. I mean, that is just an exercise in narcissism. I'll never forget. I went to a hot yoga class, which was a disaster because I hate to be hot. And (laughs) um, this woman was videoing herself the entire time doing yoga. And the coup de grace was that she was like did a headstand. But she had her her cell phone propped up against the mirror, and she was videoing all this. So I immediately call you from the car, and I'm like, you would not fucking believe what just happened in this place. You go, there's just a lot of narcissism in working out. And there is, because people think you care. But it kind of goes back to, as a species, we work out. As a species, we eat. Everybody wants to document what they're eating. Yeah. Outside the laundry... Of Kylie's and her unpacking her bag, I don't give a fuck. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay. Let me ask you this. If Kylie, we get back from one of these trips, if she set up her phone on a tripod and it showed her unpacking her suitcase, sorting laundry, doing the laundry and folding it, and she like condensed it to one of those high speed type videos and she posted it, would you share it? Would you like it? How would you feel about that? Oh, I for sure would like it. Okay. For sure would like it. What I'd like better is if I went over there and unpacked it and did the laundry and folded it and put it back up. I also would like that. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I would, I just want to make sure it gets just done. I think the situation surrounding life right now with the last 10 years of all of this social media stuff is people seem to not be able to do something for the joy of doing it for themselves. They're doing it for an audience. You did a bicep curl. You feel like you need an audience for it. You made an omelet. You feel like you need an audience for it. Also want to photograph the picture of the omelet. I'm surprised people aren't photographing their shits and posting those as well. But I think that (laughs) we're still in the infancy. Right. That that could come. Right. I When I travel, I see these people, these beautiful restaurants dangling off a cliff in the Mediterranean. They're not looking at that because they're too busy Mm -hmm. spinning their pasta and filming that and doing cheers, and they can't even enjoy this beautiful lunch. It's like something doesn't happen in their mind unless it's filmed and posted on Instagram. And I, I just... I think it's kind of vapid. Like, why can't you just go to the gym for yourself, know that you did it for you, go to sleep, get up, do other things for yourself? There are moments, of course, that are Instagrammable, that are postable. I just think a lot of this stuff we could do without. I think a lot of this stuff we could do without. 
Do you suffer from having a parasocial relationship with two barely competent (laughs) middle-aged women? If so, please go to ivehaditpodcast.com or to any social media site. I'm talking X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, etc. And click the link in bio and come see us at the Hot Shit Tour. Make your parasocial relationship real at the Hot Shit Tour. Right, Pumps? Tell them. It's so fun. We hope to see you there. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Pumps, with your youngest son going to college soon, I know you've told me that you've been feeling really sad about being an empty nester. How are you processing this? I have been processing this with my better help therapist. I love the fact that I can do it in my own home so I feel free of restraints. I can say how I feel, and it has helped me overcome the dread that I have for that event. You know, I have found better help therapy sessions so helpful. Oftentimes I feel so drained. I feel like we're sometimes so overconnected with social media, but sometimes not as personally connected and trying to navigate your emotions in this new modern world is daunting. What I love about better help is I can do it at home on my own terms, on my own time. Listener, find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash had it today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash had it. Pumps, I have to tell you, I have become very consistent with my body skincare routine thanks to Osea Malibu. I'm always struggling with what can I do to make my skin look better? And I have found that if I use Osea Malibu and use it consistently, my skin glows. I absolutely love the anti-aging body balm. It's a silky lotion serum hybrid that melts into your skin. And I feel lifted, tighter, and more toned all over for more youthful looking skin. You know, it's also important to point out that Osea is clean, vegan, cruelty-free, and climate-neutral certified. Those values are incredibly important to the two of us. Listener, glow up with Osea. Glow from the inside out with clean, vegan skin and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with the code HADIT at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to OSEAMalibu.com and be sure to use the code HADIT for 10% off. All right, let me move along. Stacy Rainwater, one of our cult members, has a great one here. She says, I've had it with the Patriots around me. One in particular has two different stores within 10 miles of me that are called the Trump Store. (laughs) They sell all sorts of Patriot clothing and Trump life-size stand-ups, the ugly red hats, (laughs) Brandon t-shirts, and stickers and flags. You name it, this Patriot sells it. He also drives around town in his jacked-up truck covered in little dick memorabilia, (laughs) a.k.a. Trump flags and bumper stickers. I've noticed that he frequents Hobby Lobby often. Uh I can't even go in there anymore because I don't want to look at him. Ladies, you think Oklahoma is bad? Come visit Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. (laughs) The good part is that we can claim Dolly Parton as a hometown girl. If y'all ever get over this way, I'd love to take you to Dollywood. I'd love to go to Dollywood. I can't imagine if I lived close to a Trump store. Because here's the thing. I think I might kind of do drive-bys. I for sure would be like, who the fuck is going in there and buying this shit? Out of morbid fascination. 100%. Listener, you probably think that we see Trump stuff all the time in Oklahoma. But we live in Oklahoma City and I rarely see it. And recently, I was at a my son's AAU basketball tournament. And there was this guy showboating and parading around. And he had on it. A Trump t-shirt with Trump's mugshot picture on it and it was said never surrender and it had the Trump logo on the back and he was running around the gym high-fiving everybody and I was fascinated by number one 
the ability to put on a t-shirt right. wherein the photograph is literally photographic evidence of a surrender. Right. But it's branded as never surrender. And they never link the two together. Never link the two together that he was surrendering to Fulton County Department of Corrections. That's why he had the, the poster. And there's photographic evidence of the surrender, which they print on a T-shirt. And somebody says, I've got it. Let's call it the never, never surrender. surrender. And everybody's like, great idea. Nobody great talked idea. anybody off the ledge. And then people buy them yeah. and then wear them. The cascade of opportunities that were passed up for someone to wave their arms in the air and say, <laughs> hey, this makes you look like a dumbass is mystifying to me. I think it's because they're all dumbasses. Here's the deal. We live in Oklahoma City, backward ass as you can be. I have never seen a Trump store. Have you all? I have to say... The only time I see Trump memorabilia, they're selling it on the side of the street, they've got all the flags, is when I'm near where Pumps lives. Yeah, out in the suburbs. Well, I never see it. I've never seen it one time. Like, I don't even know where I would go get a MAGA I've hat. Once. Thank God. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Fox News is going crazy about inner city crime and all of this stuff. And just know that I have been a whistleblower from day one about the fuckery and the brainwashing going on in the American suburbs. I'm telling you guys, it's not good. That's where the bad architecture megachurches reign. That's where these Trump dump trucks selling flags and shit are on the outskirts of. Something's going on in the suburbs. Yeah, I have These HOAs are breeding grounds for all this crazy shit. Yeah, don't even get me started on HOAs. But here's the deal. I mean, I, I can guess what you're going to say, but Kylie, as a younger person, when I see a truck with a MAGA flag or I see a house with a MAGA flag, I immediately... I know what you think. I cannot... I think, obviously, you're compensating for your little penis mm -hmm. from your little leader. <laughs> but I also think you're just not very smart. Like, I immediately think you're just not very smart. As a younger person, what do you think? You just think psychotic or... Yeah, crazy, very stupid... Didn't have a good education, missing a couple teeth. I'll tell you what I think. Okay. Crazy, Bible thumper, filled with hate, uh, teeny weeny issues probably, um, and fascist cult member. Yeah. I, I think all those are apt descriptions. And I think if somebody happens to not be overtly religious and ascribes to all of that, then probably we're looking at some sort of personality disorder that <laughs> sets the psychological soil for them to fall prey to this. It's not normal. It, there's nothing normal about this. And the Trump stores, it's just, and they're all about, let's make it made in America. Let's bring all the jobs back to America. All that shit's made in China. Right. That's what I was going to say. It's all made in China. Yeah. Gross. All right, Kylie. All right. This one is from William. He writes, all right, this is niche, but I've had it with people sending photos of their injuries or photos from surgery. You do the right thing and ask someone how they are feeling after surgery slash recovery, and they send a full photo of their foot cut open on the operating table in a full family group message. <laughs> and in parentheses, he writes, had it with group messages as well. I just want to be nice and check in, and now I have to see the bones and flesh inside your foot had it. I could not agree more. I don't know when we started taking pictures of ourselves in surgery or in the hospital. I think it's weird. That's like you're compromised. You're at your most vulnerable. Why would you put that on the internet? This goes back to the larger discussion we just had yeah. about everybody photographing everything. Some things are just not filmable or photographable. And we need to get this memo out, not just to America, but around the globe. I couldn't agree more. It's just, it's unnecessary. You're at lunch and you eat a taco, no need to photograph it nope. and pop it up on the internet because everybody knows that most humans eat lunch and everybody basically knows what a taco looks like. This is not interesting, nor neat, nor cute. When we get on to the um, hypochondriacs <laughs> that want to share their broken 
bones, incision scars, and then just a larger discussion that people want to talk about ailments. Yeah. And I, I I don't want to hear about any of this. I've never watched any sort of uh, Grey's Anatomy or ER, despite how hot George Clooney is. I never watched any of it because I don't want to hear about medical procedures. All right. Derek says, I've had it with wannabe influencers sitting in a chair outside talking about how it's been so long since you've streamed because you're so busy with your baby does not make you interesting. (laughs) No one gives a fuck. Your 100 followers can lick my manscaped balls. (laughs) Fucking love the manscaped balls. That's fantastic. I think it's hilarious when people do like, Hey, guys, sorry I haven't posted in like three weeks. Because when I see that, I'm like, I never even noticed that you didn't post. You're literally on a platform that has kittens, puppies, adult cats, adult dogs. I don't know if you've seen this red panda. I love the red panda. Killer whales, Italy. Zits. Islands, earwax, zits. Mm -hmm. And you think... That somebody noticed that you didn't post for three weeks, and the re- the announcement of the rearrival cracks me up. But first, okay, f- let's break this down. First and foremost, the announcement of the departure <laughs> is fantastic. Nobody knows you're gone. Hey guys, I'm going to make a take a social media break. I need to replug. Social media has been so toxic. There's so many toxic people on here. And then of course. They disappear for a little bit, but you will see a rogue like (laughs) on maybe animals are amazing or something where they're just automatically kind of did it, Mm -hmm. you know, then the re-arrival announcement is just, hey guys, I'm back. I'm back. I'm all rested. Let me tell you what I learned from my social media break. Got so much introspection on my social media break. Hot news flash for you. You didn't learn jack shit because if you had learned something, you wouldn't have announced your re-arrival. You'd just right. be a normal fucking person that has an app on your phone that you look at a couple of times a day, go down some rabbit hole like the rest of us. Nobody is monitoring your social media whereabouts except for yourself. Right. The fact that you're projecting that everybody's so concerned about where you are is very revealing to what's going on on the other side of your phone. That's absolutely right. You know what I do? And this is kind of along the influencer line. There are a couple people that I watch on social media just for the sheer, like, I cannot believe the shit is on the internet voluntarily. Like, I cannot believe the shit they're posting. It's a hate watch. It's a hate watch. And I'm into it. I dig it. I like look at it first thing in the morning until you did tell me they know if I'm looking. Yeah, you're such an idiot. I didn't know that. I've accidentally liked it too, but that's not the point. Oh my God. I didn't know. I I didn't know. I thought you had to hit the little heart button. I didn't know if you hit the picture. I was trying to open the picture up, like make it bigger. And I liked it, but that's, that's a whole nother issue. but Here's the thing. I know exactly what you're talking about. There are some people on social media where the freak flag oh my gosh. is neon. I mean, bright. And it is flapping. And it's kind of beautiful. Yeah. Because you watch it and you think, this motherfucker is off of her rock. Yeah. <laughs> and I am rock solid. <laughs> I, I've got my shit together. There's something about watching crazy, really, really crazy narcissistic people on the internet, which is so satisfying. Yeah, it is. I like it. I mean, I like it. Does I'll it make even... you feel good about you? Probably on yeah. some level. My more immediate emotional response is, oh my God. I mean, I'm so bad. I'll like text a friend and say, oh my gosh, you've got to look. Like I'm, I'm so into it. But what always strikes me about these people, like I'm watching it, I'd be heartbroken if the posts were gone, <laughs> but they think they're an influencer or whatever, and they might have like 23 likes. Yeah. And I'm like, is is that an influencer? I mean, please don't stop because I'd be bored to tears. Right. But I just, I don't know. I, I guess I just don't know what the threshold is for an influencer. 
I'd like a definition of that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You remember I went off on influencers once. Yeah, it really came back to bite you in the ass. Yeah, they all canceled me. But here's the thing. I'm going to double down. It If that's your goal to be an influencer and you're doing it because you want a career in that, okay, you know, do it. But if it's so much of it seems to be so wrapped in desperation that sometimes it is painful to watch. Right. You know, I think, is this good for them? Is this, but I mean, it's not my business, whatever. I don't really understand the whole influencer culture. I follow a couple of them, but I mean, they're like, they've got millions of followers and they're always out doing cool shit. Right. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. No, I get that. 100%. And here's the deal. I understand why somebody would want to be one. Right. Because you get, you know, all these perks. Free stuff. But I would say it's probably pretty difficult. I mean, because it goes back to our narrative that if you have to film everything you do, that would be exhausting. Yeah, no. And the constant feedback. Right. And if you're going to be on there giving your comments and stuff, expect take comments. Yes. You can't be a fucking snowflake and try to do that. That's right. Pops, not one day goes by that I am not taking my products from our absolute favorite brand, Just Thrive. Their products are amazing. They've helped me with my bloating, constipation, diarrhea. I actually poop like a normal person and it's liberating. I, you know, I have never considered like somebody bragging about their bowel movements as a positive thing, but I know how miserable you are when you're not regular. And I'm just so happy for you that Just Thrive has solved this very frustrating problem for you. I also would be remiss if I didn't mention the Just Thrive Psychobiotic. It is the, a mood leveler. It's made me calmer, happier, and a much better podcaster. Listener, right now, when you go to justthrivehealth.com and use promo code HADIT, you can get 20% off your 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm. That's like getting a month for free. That's justthrivehealth.com and be sure to use the promo code had it. Pumps like you, my family is constantly struggling with what to eat. Is it healthy enough? Using a takeout delivery service. I don't really have the time to go to the store and do a lot of meal prep. I found the best solution. It's called Hungry Root Delivery. I love Hungry Root because the options are healthy, fast, and I don't have a lot of leftover food. Listener, Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high-quality groceries, simple recipes, and essential supplements. It's like your personal assistant for healthy living. All you have to do is take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, and more. Then they'll build you a personalized cart with all of your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to use. Right now, Hungry Root is offering I I've had it listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to hungryroot.com slash had it to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's hungryroot.com slash had it. Don't forget to use our link so that they know that we sent you. Pumps, you know how fanatical I am about the health and well-being of my French bulldogs. I do. I am so happy to share with you and our listeners about a new subscription food service that I'm now ordering for my dogs called Sundays. Sundays is a fresh dog food made from a short list of human grade ingredients. And what I particularly like about Sundays is unlike other fresh dog foods, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. My dogs, however, are over the moon about Sundays. They love this dog food. My dogs are really picky eaters too. And so sometimes they won't eat their dog food. But ever since I switched to Sundays, they gobble it right up. And Sundays dog food is so easy to serve and so easy to store. Listeners, you can get 40% off your first order of Sundays. All you have to do is go to sundaysfordogs.com slash had it and use the code had it at checkout. All right, I've got one from Jacob Williams. He said, I've been dying to share. I've had it with people who park by the curb 
to quickly run into the store or restaurant. <laughs> You're telling me in this entire parking lot, you thought the most logical parking spot for you was the middle of the fucking road? <laughs> Now every car is battling to get around you while you block the flow of traffic. We're literally all just running in for something. You're not special. Pick a damn parking spot. Definitely seems like something pumps would do too. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to have to admit, yeah. while you were reading that, yep. I was like, guilty. I'll just do a quick run in. I used to do it at carpool all the time. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. I got in a huge fight with the security at carpool one time because I did it at all three of the schools where I had a kid. I just parked right in the middle of the car. I mean, it was was off hours, but I was dropping something off in each school and this guy like put like a thing on my car, like a yellow piece of paper that like I was a parking violator and I pulled it off in front of him and I was just like, fuck off. And he was just like, you are breaking the rules. I'm like, what are you going to do? Like, who are you? I mean, I just crawled right in his ass. And then he made some shitty comment. And then I really doubled down. All that's to say, I'm an offender. I do that. I try not to. I don't like that one bit. I, 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 I Because I just think I'm so quick. Our kids went to separate schools, so I never saw you doing this. Otherwise, I would have browbeat you. Yeah, from but then, you can and believe I still it. Still continue now, but there was a gal at my kids' school that did this, and I always ran in. I didn't wait in line in the car line for my kids to load. I parked, and I don't have to drive around for five minutes to find a parking spot close to the front. I just park where available. I would walk in and get my children. And then I would walk them back out. And there was always this pumps in the crowd who <laughs> thought that one. she was so great. And she would park right up front and turn on her hazards and run in and get her kids and run back out. And I thought, you don't get to do that. Like you park, you got to walk in and get your kids. You're creating an obstacle for all these other cars. And I agree with this. Is it Jacob? Yes. I agree with Jacob because I've seen people do this at stores. And I'm like, you're literally talking about a 12 second more walk to your day. And I think it's peak entitlement to think that you don't have to park where everybody else parks and that you're so special that you get to park up front and run and do something and run back out. I don't like that. I think you need to talk to your therapist about it. Okay. But I just, I just want to go on record that my response is I am that special. (laughs) All right. Uh, Next up, I have Emily Lynn. Emily Lynn says, I've fucking had it with the phrase, I don't know who needs to hear this, but. (laughs) It's a great one. Like, shut the fuck up. If you don't know who needs to hear something, then keep it to yourself or wait until you find someone who does. But we know you don't care who needs to hear it. Just go ahead and say you're a grandstanding know-it-all and save us the time. Nobody needs to hear it. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. And I ha- we hadn't even thought about that. It's a great one. That's a great one. It's, it's great like one. if nobody needs to hear it, shut the fuck up. Right. Great point. I mean, then you're just wasting everybody's time. I don't know who needs to hear this, but that is so true. It's just obnoxious. It's really obnoxious. It's kind of like I have so much sage advice to dole out. I don't uh, know if you need to hear it, but it's so wonderful. Uh-huh. I have to share it. Yeah. Bullshit. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We can combine a lot of these things together. Okay. And we can do a post. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm doing 10 bicep Bicep curls curls right now. And then I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm eating a taco. And you could do it all day long. And you could just, because the basically those two things live in the same space. Right. They're all intertwined. It's all that fuckery. Okay, I've got one from Adriana. Okay. And she writes, I've had it with people who want to make a lesson out of everything. (laughs) So what did you learn from this? Or what lessons do you take away from this experience? Well, Brian, I learned to not fucking bring you into a project again, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) God damn it. Not everything has an enlightening learning behind it. I've had it. Love you, ladies. Greetings from Berlin. Not everything in life is a lesson. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's great. Oftentimes, it's just mundane. There's really not a whole lot of lessons. 
also the whole, what lesson did you learn from this? The lesson I've learned is that you need to mind your fucking business <laughs> and that you're being codependent. <laughs> That's what I just learned. I learned that you've missed therapy for all of your life, and it's time for your codependent ass to go get into therapy <laughs> because my lessons are none of your goddamn business. That's what lesson <laughs> I've learned, you dipshit. I've had it with that. <laughs> my lesson is you fucking suck. My lesson is you're an asshole. Okay, this segues into our last one from Ryan. Ryan says... I'm sure this has been brought up, but basically every piece of corporate lingo, circle back, <laughs> touch base, let's take this offline, let's put this in the parking lot. By time Friday comes, I've had it. Throw me off a roof. Lucy chimes in, scramble the jets, <laughs> reinvent the wheel, synergy, bandwidth, drill down. An Artemis chimes in. Back in the day, there was always a lot of wood to chop. And listener, I'll tell you guys, we were recently on a call where mm -hmm. some points came up, came up and they're like, all right, well, let's workshop that. Right. And then they said circle back a couple times. It, there was a lot of workshopping. There was a lot of circling back. And what I have to say to all of that is shut the fuck up. Nobody's circling back. Nobody's workshopping. I don't want to go to a workshop. I don't want to run in circles. I want no part of any of it. <laughs> It's so funny because we were just had this experience and we were all saying the exact same thing. I immediately got off the phone and diminished any valid point any of these people had because they used this corporate speak talk. I think it is so stupid. I can't stand it when we're on a Zoom mm -hmm. and we're with this, you know, like there's probably we're about seven or eight people deep in the Zoom and they start in with all this yak. Right. I immediately want to go, everybody cut the crap. Right. What, how do you feel cut about Cut the it? fucking crap and say, I think that's a bad idea. Right. And here's why. I don't need for you to put on kid gloves to deal with it because I'm not a pussy. Right. You don't have to say circle back. You don't have to say workshop. You can say, I think your idea is shit. Jennifer can handle it. I don't need to workshop a bad idea. I would much rather be told that is a bad idea. Then I can go, we'll cross that right off my list and let's go on. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's a colossal waste of time trying to spare a bit everybody's feelings at work. It's like your idea sucks. You didn't do a good job. You need to redo this. Just be honest. Tell me what the story is and let's move on. We just waste a lot of time loving on everybody's feelings unnecessarily. We wasted a lot of time scrambling the jets. <laughs> I want to know what take it out into the parking lot means. Like they're going to fist fight? Wait, hang on. I think it's not take it out in the parking lot. They said, let's put this in the parking lot. Oh, let's put it in the parking lot. We're just going to park that idea? Yeah, let's put this in the parking let's, lot. Let's store it. Instead of just saying, it's a horrible idea. Here's the deal, pumps. Your idea Sucks. of thinking you're so great and parking in front of the school when everybody else has to park in the parking lot, it sucks. It reeks of entitlement. You need to fucking pull yourself together. And to that, you'll look at me and you'll say, you're right. I would. Th I was thinking that you'd look at me and say, fuck off. No, I mean, I mean, I mean that it's a legitimate cri criticism. A lot of ideas I would tell you to fuck off, but not on that one. Yeah. So I, I just I, you know, we let me, this may surprise you, listener. But a lot of times we have really bad ideas for podcast episodes. <laughs> I'm sure they've witnessed them in real time. The one thing we don't say to each other is let's scramble the jets. Let's put that in the parking lot. Let's workshop it. We just literally look at each other and say, no, I just don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. And then we all immediately move on because we've defined it as a bad idea. And it goes to the bad idea cemetery where it remains forever. <laughs> And we've labeled it as such. We don't have to try to make people feel better because a lot of people have a lot of bad ideas. Right. Pumps and I are chock full of them. Chock full of bad ideas. Yeah. All right. Listen up, listeners. We've got to go scramble the jets and workshop some ideas for some upcoming episodes <laughs> while we put this in the parking lot. Be sure to come see us on the Hot Shit Tour. We're going to do our last leg for this spring and then take the summer off so you can come see us in Fort Lauderdale, Charlotte, or Boston next week. And... 
We have a lot of fantastic merch available in our link tree. We're, feel free to send us some workshop ideas while we scramble the jets for the next merch drop. <laughs> and pumps, tell them. We will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both. I'll tell you what I've had.